The medieval warmth, the little ice age, and today. The medieval warm period was a time stretching between the 9th to the 13th century, which experienced warmer than usual temperatures. A few centuries later, the Earth experienced what is known as the Little Ice Age. This period was noted by cooler than average temperatures, which extended from the 15th century until about the 19th century, where temperatures have begun to rise until the present. Warmer temperatures during the medieval warming period were not uniform across the entire Earth. Global temperatures during the 9th to 13th centuries ranged from a half a degree to 2 degrees Celsius or up to 3 degrees Fahrenheit. North American evidence for this warming is the presence of trees higher up on mountain ranges such as the Rockies. This suggests that glaciers were retreating, which increased the availability of fresh water and thus yielding higher tree growth. Western North America, there were droughts so intense that they were dubbed mega droughts. The best record of these droughts comes from the tree rings. For several hundred years up until the 15th century, well over half the area routinely experienced severe droughts at this time. In the Great Plains, bison's bones found at archaeological sites indicate that the climate was drier and the bison population shrank as grasslands became deserts. The great cliff cities in the Four Corners region of the west, such as Chaco Canyon and Mesa Verde, uh, were all abandoned toward the end of the drought. These societies were based on irrigation agriculture. The most reasonable way to determine the cause of medieval warmth is to compare it to modern events which most closely resemble it. Similarities between the global patterns of the medieval warmth and those of La Nina events suggest that the medieval warmth was caused by a sustained La Nina-like state along the warmth of the North Atlantic. La Nina occurs when the southeast trade winds are particularly strong and the western Pacific waters move toward the coast of South America with colder than normal temperatures, and South American upwelling becomes more intense. This rearranges global atmospheric circulation, causing reduced precipitation across mid-latitude mid across each hemisphere, specifically over western North America. Sediment cores from the coast of Peru, sea surface temperatures from the Santa Barbara Channel Islands, Stalagmite records in India and historical records from Europe all support that a La Nina-like state occurred at this period. A precursor to the Little Ice Age was the eruption of Mount Salamis in 1257, which is in Indonesia. A magnitude 7.0 eruption, the immediate effects were a cold summer with lots of rain for much of the northern hemisphere, especially Western Europe. However, the next year, the winter of 1258, there were unseasonably warm temperatures, with strawberries and apples blooming in January. This short-term warming is universally accepted to be the result of the greenhouse effect from increased levels of sulfur and carbon dioxide, which trap lots of heat. Despite this short-lived warming, the Little Ice Age corresponds directly with the Maunder Minimum, which was the decrease in sunspot activity observed here. Although sunspots are cool areas of the sun, they are sources of magnetic activity and emit charged particles as well as infrared and ultraviolet energy. Therefore, it is widely understood that less sunspots equals less energy emitted from the sun and cooler temperatures on Earth. During this time, Europe and North America saw winters that routinely reached 2 degrees Celsius or up to 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than normal. These were the winters in which the Thames River in London froze over and the locals held frost fairs where they would do fun things like sled and ski on the ice, as well as other fun things like inhibiting trade and shipping due to the frozen harbors. With the Little Ice Age came strong atmospheric circulation coupling. Ice cores from Greenland and glacial reconstructions from Norway suggest that the North Atlantic Oscillation went into a semi-permanent state of high polarity, causing warm air from the United States to travel up the jet streams to the British Isles, Iceland, and Scandinavia. Green sediment cores from the Carrico Basin record a southern migration of the intertropical convergence zone. Cores from eastern Africa and the Galapagos Archipelago suggest changes in the El Nino Southern Oscillation. Cores from lakes in Western Africa display mirror changes of El Nino Southern Oscillation in the Western African monsoon. This would have increased latitudinal sea temperatures, which would have intensified the Hadley sails and steepened the equator to the polar gradient. At the end of the Little Ice Age came the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and humans' reliance on fossil fuels. Human activities from this point on have been a major driving force to climate change. CO2 release from burning coal and petroleum has caused intense damage to the ozone layer. The cutting down of forests for lumber and grazing land eliminates resources for removing excess CO2 in the atmosphere. Oceans absorb 20 to 35% of anthropogenic CO2 emissions. 
Effects of human activities on the oceans have modeled and, and expressed a negative biological impact. Multiple marine species will experience CO2 toxicity and the reduce in size. Species with low activity modes of life may be able to tolerate the change for the short term, but the population density will eventually decrease due to their lack of tolerance. This projection is in accordance with the CO2 effects on the past species which led to the Permian Triassic mass extinction event. Pollution and global warming have caused oxygen levels to fall in the oceans, causing large reductions in marine fauna, especially species sensitive to temperature changes. Warming is presently being accelerated by carbon cycle feedbacks. El Nino events will bring on larger quantities of CO2 in the atmosphere as the terrestrial biosphere becomes a large source of CO2. Then as large forests disappear, CO2 levels increase, which causes surface temperatures to increase. This then causes plant and soil respiration rates to greatly increase, causing a reduction in carbon storage. Loss of carbon from the terrestrial uh, ecosystem leads to an increase in atmospheric CO2 levels. The Governmental Panel on Climate Change in 2007 projected carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere from 2000 to 2100. These projections are based upon different scenarios, mostly dependent upon rates of carbon dioxide emission from the past 25 years. The IPCC projects warming to range anywhere from 0 to 6 degrees Celsius or up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit over the next 100 years with 1.8 to 4 degrees Celsius most likely. This warming is clearly the most significant warming the Earth has had over the past 1,000 years and is at a much quicker rate, which is clearly a cause for concern. While there have been various temperature fluctuations over the past 1,000 years, it is clear that the present and future temperature change that is expected is largely human caused. Although times during the medieval warming period were largely natural, global temperatures did increase. Likewise, the cooling during the Little Ice Age was largely due to the Maunder Minimum and ITCZ Southern Migration. For the future, although sunspot activity has increased and peaked during the 1950s, Current temperature scenarios and projections expect temperatures to increase to a higher magnitude in addition to having higher negative temperature effects on animals. This means that humans need to be hyper aware of their impact on overall global temperatures, particularly carbon dioxide emission levels, and all they can do to minimize their impact on the Earth's natural temperature fluctuations.